Okay, confession time. I was the little pig who built her house out of straw. It was my spiritual house and, you know, there were probably a few sticks thrown in along with the straw, but it just wasn't strong enough when the big bad wolf came. James Luther Adams said, an unexamined faith is not worth having, for it can be true only by accident. A faith worth having is a faith worth discussing and testing. Oh, now you tell me. Look, it's not like I knew that I had an unexamined faith. In fact, if you had said that to me, I would have been pretty offended. I mean, I read lots of books on spirituality, listened to talk shows and other people's ideas. Heck, I had already started seminary. And so I built my spiritual house with what I found around me. And occasionally someone else would throw in a handful of straw and I'd pack it in without really examining it very thoroughly. But, you know, I was just so busy. I mean, there, we all stay so busy. There's things to do. I'm sure for the little pig it was the same thing. It was a beautiful sunny day and she had no idea that a very large canis lupus with an apparently freakishly huge lung capacity was going to come knocking on her door. That's the way with big bad wolves. For me, well, I had a baby daughter, six months old, and she had a little bulge in her tummy. We went to play group that morning, then stopped off at the pediatrician's office after lunch. That evening, the elevator doors opened and we were looking at a sign that said that we were on the pediatric oncology floor. Sure didn't see that big bad wolf. The faith that I had just couldn't hold up to that. And it was all blown away. I mean, you know, like that idea of everything happens for a reason. I would felt pretty strongly about that. But you know, a little baby with cancer, there's just not a good enough reason in the entire world. I wound up having all of my beliefs stripped away. And what was really surprising to me at the time were all of these like phantom beliefs that I hadn't even known I'd had. Um, things that if you told me about them, beforehand, I would have said, no, no, I don't believe that. But there they were, stuck back there somewhere in my subconscious. Things like um, kind of an idea that you would only have one major tragedy in your life. Well, I had a brother who died um, right before my 10th birthday, so I knew. I was safe. I had already had my big tragedy. Uh, another was, believe it or not, about gratitude. Gratitude, don't get me wrong, gratitude is a wonderful thing. But somehow I had made it into a superstition, a talisman. You know, like, if I am grateful enough for everything that I have, then there will be no need for life to swoop in and give me the kind of lesson that will teach me to appreciate all that I have. I already appreciated everything. It was all stripped away. 
all of it. And I was left in the de desert with no beliefs. And frankly, I just didn't see that there was any meaning at all. Well, my daughter got better. She healed. And it took me a little bit longer, but I healed too. And so then I knew that I needed to find meaning again. I mean, I very literally went on a quest for meaning. But this time, I wanted to make sure that everything that I put back into my spiritual house was something that I had examined and studied about. I wanted to be really rigorous in the way that I built this back up. I talked to several of my friends and I said, look, I have a whole lot of questions and no answers. Would you be interested in joining me on this quest? And they said yes. Uh, it was a great group, and it really worked for me. The group lasted about three years, and in hearing other people talk about their questions and about the meanings that they had found, I was able to find my own meanings. The fifth book of First Thessalonians says, Do not put out spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold fast to what is good.